So Laura and I met New Year's Eve 2001 into 2002. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> Salt. We became friends. About a month into it, Jamie started acting a little weird around me. I have a thing for hot Jewish butches, like I just do. And then she was planning to move to Massachusetts, and two weeks before she moved away, she was like, you want to just have some fun before I leave? And I was like, yeah, sure. You like that onion? You just have a big hunk of onion, huh? My strange, strange child. <laughs> You know, 10 years later, we're still having a little fling. <laughs> Take a drinking drink. Whoa. <coughs> OK. Yeah, that went down the wrong too, huh? Got mommy and mama tapping you on both sides. Well. <laughs> See? <Yeah>. Smooth. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> Morning of the kills. Like it's spicy. <laughs> As they say in Massachusetts. Often, people assume that the roles are reversed around what happens at home based on our gender presentation. People still assume that I'm the birth mother all the time. People always talk about, well, but you're butch, and don't you ever feel like that's in opposition to doing this ultimately womanly thing? And for me, it's not. It's just who I am, and I've never felt like anything other than a woman. I'm a butch woman, but I'm a woman. Right on down. Boop. When we found out we were having a boy, we came up with a short list of names that we liked and that when we met him, we would know which name was right. <laughs> he knows we're talking about him. <laughs> Simon comes from the Hebrew name Shimon, and it means uh, to listen. His middle name is Lev, L-E-V. It means heart. So his name is to listen from the heart. Good job. 47. 48. 49. At three months and three weeks, Simon was diagnosed with dilated cardiomyopathy. And he presented an acute congestive heart failure. The doctor said, here's the diagnosis. You can expect at least three weeks in the hospital. And we ended up being there for four months. Bust my buffers. Bust my buffers. What else does he say? There's nothing like getting news that your child might die or has a lifelong critical illness. Well, and I remember one of the ICU docs actually pulling us aside, and he said, this is going to be a huge thing for your relationship. So I just want you to know, you're going to have to fight for this. And this is the kind of stuff that breaks up families. Most of the time that we were in the hospital, we were like this the entire time. I was so afraid that if I was disconnected, like I was going to fly off into space or something. Good job. I believed that every moment that I spent with him in the hospital, reading to him, singing to him, touching his body in all the ways that I could around the wires and the lines, kept him alive. And so now the child that doesn't stop talking, that's my fault. <laughs> Simon's classified as what's called globally delayed, which basically means he's delayed a across a bunch of areas. And it was clear he wasn't going to be eating by mouth for a long time. The January after we got released, he had another surgery to put in his feeding tube. This is Simon's blenderized food. And what's in there is just anything that a three and a half year old might eat anyway. Blend it up, and it looks like that. So every time you do a bite, you get to put it in the frying pan. And then we can do more iPad. The next step is to get him to do m more eating through his mouth. That's a therapeutic meal. That's awesome. Simon, two bites down. Mmm, choo-choo and swallow. This is the most work right now. Eating is really complicated, and the stakes are high. If you don't get it right, you choke. <laughs> We're working on it. The hope and the faith that we have that he will eventually get off the tube oh, is gosh. there. And at our last cardiology visit, his heart function jumped up into the very bottom of the normal range. But that's a that's been a three and a half year process. Which is like 90% her doing <laughs> to get him to that point. I well, mean, she's done. And 90% her supporting me <laughs> to do that. Tobacco Prevention Project, this is Jamie. For me, it was that moment of Jamie going out and getting a job to take care of the family. Mm -hmm. She did it for all of us. I can't thank her enough for being that person in our family. Her job is 100 times harder than mine.
I don't really know what it's like to live her life. I get bathroom breaks. I eat when I want to eat. She's totally at the mercy of whatever needs to happen. It's by far the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Isn't that parenthood? <laughs> bim bum. Bim, 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 bum. Bum, bim. I didn't grow up with any traditions. Then Laura grew up Jewish. I was really clear from the beginning, I would like to raise Simon Jewish, essentially. And it's been incredible because Simon was so much Hebrew. He's like all Jew all the time. It's so, I love it. Shabbat Shalom. Hi. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat, 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 Shalom. We both have this very traditional streak that's clearly not traditional because we're both women. But in our wedding, you know, I wore a long white wedding dress and she wore a tuxedo and there was no question about that. I love that about being queer actually, that I, I get to pick the things that I want from that structure and then leave behind the stuff that doesn't work. Ah, uh, ah, uh, me, me. Best bud, buffer. <laughs> There are two things that I am proudest of in my life. And one is my relationship with Laura. We have a date night every Thursday night where my mom comes and stays over and takes care of him every single week. Date night is huge. I mean, I don't... That's a marriage saver. I don't even know many parents of healthy kids mm -mm. that get that. Mm -mm. Just having that time that's set aside, that's just for us, that's been carved out, even if we don't even have some overt conversation or communication or connection, just sitting next to each other, holding hands in a movie theater. Jamie is my, she's my bashert. She is my soulmate. She is my great love. And none of those things mean that we have it easy all the time, but it means that I know that she will always be there in the best way possible for me, for the family. It was this like very calm, sure feeling about her where I was like, I don't believe that there is a person but you are my person. We're gonna end up together and we're gonna get married and we're gonna have kids. And I don't know why I know this, but we're gonna happen and it was gonna be good. I want to love her the way that she enjoys being loved. Not just the way that I know how to love her, but also the way that she wants to be loved. And both are really important. I'm gonna throw the ball for Roxy. All right, you do it in the small one. Steady. <laughs> so this is something that I wrote to Laura uh, after we, we learned that Simon's heart function had, had gone into the normal range for the first time ever. So Laura, when you called me to tell me about the great news from Simon's cardiology visit, my first thought was, you did this. This is the fruit of your work, Laura. Your sacrifices of time and energy and basically everything that was yours are not in vain. Keeping on top of Simon's feeding and making sure that his meds happen on time and are the right dose, making sure that he gets extra food if he barfs it up, taking him to his appointments. You have created the container that he needed for his body to begin healing and nurtured his tender weak spots left from his days in the ICU. This latest visit is tangible proof of your work. There were doctors and nurses that thought we might never make it out of the hospital with a live child, but we did. And not only is that child alive, he is so here, so firmly on the earth, and so happy to be here that he stops people in his tracks with his light. Mama. You've been feeding his light for almost three and a half years, Laura, and it's blindingly bright. I know you haven't done it completely alone, but you have done the lion's share. I will never be able to express my gratitude to you for keeping our child alive. Our boy is thriving, and it's because of you. Thank you. I am your eternally grateful wife. <laughs> Count it down. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> that was a big one. I hope I didn't bonk a fish on his head. And a big one. Rocks. Will you get me some more rocks? <laughs>